Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from God's word the Bible. We are going through a very small series of study about breaking the bonds of legalism. Breaking the bonds of legalism. Legalistic mindset say things that I am so good or I am not so bad that God owes something to me and according to what I deserve, God is going to give me eternal life. That is the root of legalism. But uh, before we go into the details about the legalistic mindset and uh, what we need to learn about it, we are looking at uh, some words of hope which the word of God has explained to us. Five words of gospel hope. And those five words are the characteristics or attributes of God which is displayed in the gospel. We already learned that any person who knows the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, Christ came into this world to save sinners. Uh, eternal life can be procured by any sinner who repent and turn to Christ and accept him as their personal Savior and Lord, they can find forgiveness of sin and the justification from God and the righteousness of God is being imputed into his life, applied into his life or credited into his life for account so that he will have a perfect righteous standing before God. All by grace alone, by Christ alone, by faith alone, for the glory of God alone. That we have seen and now we are looking at uh, certain characteristics of God which is displayed in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First we learn that gospel tells us that God is a God of love. For that we read two passages. For once, uh, one was from 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 where we uh, already read that uh, God is a God of love. For God, love is from God and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Then in verse 9 we read like this. 1 John chapter 4 verse 9. By this the love of God was manifested in us. That God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. 10 verse 10. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. So the manifestation of the love of God was done uh, at the cross of Calvary. A giving of Christ for us, His incarnation, His perfect life on the face of the earth, His teachings about the eternal truths, His, his uh, 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 gathering uh, people, unto himself as disciples and ultimately dying on the cross of Calvary to pay the penalty of the sins of those who will believe him, trust him, obey him and love him. And those things manifest that God is a God of love. How can a God who is holy give a salvation free of cost? Because he is loving. It's very clear from the pages of the scripture. And then we all also learned from Romans chapter 5 verse 6 onwards when we were helpless, when we were ungodly, when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It is not when we were doing good or some good that he loved us or died for us. No, not when we were godly, but when we were ungodly, uh, he died for us. What, what is the meaning of godly life and ungodly life? Godly life is a life which is centered around God and his presence. So a person who is godly, it is not that he goes to the church or some religious activity or some temple or some mosque or some place and then come back. Such people are not, uh, cannot be called godly because of the, uh, of the scriptural explanation. We can call a person godly when he acknowledges the presence of God in every day to day minute by minute activities of his life he's a godly person that means he remember that God sees and God knows and God is everywhere and I am living my life as an open book before this holy omnipotent omniscient God and I cannot escape 
being getting noticed by him, assessed by him, evaluated by him and then I live according to the principles which he has laid in the pages of the scripture. What pleases him, I do. What displeases him, I will not do. What he want me to do, I do. Uh, what uh, he has prohibited me in, uh, not to do, I don't do. Uh, why I do that? Not as a legalist, but because of the gratitude for the love which he has uh, manifested or displayed or demonstrated through offering a great salvation, a free gift of salvation offered through the Lord Jesus Christ. And a godly person deal with his five wife at home, the privacy of home in a, a godly way. Means God is there. So I need to treat my wife with respect and honor and uh, uh, concern. And the same thing happens to a wife who, who is godly. Yeah, she will deal with the husband in a submissive and subordinated uh, way where uh, she knows that God is watching. The same way children will obey the parents, honor the parents because God is watching. And for children, the, uh, the parents will uh, bring them up in the fear and knowledge of God and according to the principles of God. Why? God is watching how I am raising these children unto their God's glory. Please don't think that children belong to us and we can uh, make them what uh, we want them to be. But that is not the right thing. God has entrusted us uh, uh, with these children in our hand so that we will raise them as godly people uh, equipped to glorify God and for the good of the society. For that we need God's guidance, guidance. we need God's guidebook, the Bible. And what I am trying to say is that it is not when we were godly that Christ died for us when we were ungodly and when we were sinners. And such uh, 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 passages, there are many passages, these are two sample passages from Romans as well as First John which we have read. It shows that God is a God of love and His unprompted and unmerited love towards us is uh, uh, His disposition. That is who He is and that never changes. He will not change His character. He cannot change His character. And uh, in the light of these passages, we can say that I had no claim on God. I had no claim on the gift, a great gift of salvation that I enjoy and will enjoy throughout all of eternity. There was nothing in me except the sin and that I needed to be saved from. That's true of every man, every woman, every child, you and me. We have no claim on God because of our merit or because of our doing or not doing certain things. So, the, the, so this humbles us. But as we are humbled, our eyes are lifted up. Our eyes are lifted up to glory. We see the great love, uh, 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 love which came to the sinners through the Lord Jesus Christ. One theologian put it in this way. We talk about God as a good God, he said, and I, and I quote, okay, this theologian told and I am quoting. The supreme expression of God's goodness is the amazing grace and inexpressible love that shows kindness to save by saving sinners who deserve only condemnation and saving them, moreover, at the tremendous cost of Christ's death on the Calvary. So, uh, supreme expression of God's love is that God is willing to save sinners. That is one thing. He is willing to give His own begotten Son on the cross of Calvary as a punishment or as an offering, as a substitute for uh, you and me. That shows without any doubt, uh, any, we need not have any clarification that God is a God of love. We are talking about this 2000 odd years later. Christ did this. Christ secured our salvation at the cross long before you and me were even born. So it's obvious that we are the beneficiaries of something that we did not prompt God to do. That is the point what I want to make. In the light of learning 
how to break the bondage of legalism we need to understand that when you look at the gospel of christ when you look at the cross of christ when he when we look at the agonious death which he died on behalf of you and me we understand that we did not prompt prompt it because we were not there at that time 2000 odd years back no long long years before you and me we were born into this world god demonstrated his love we did not prompt god to do it we are the beneficiaries of an eternal love that has been set upon uh, us long time back what's the key here as we move into this series of breaking the bond of legalism the key is this god's love prompted your salvation not anything in you listen to me carefully god's love god's eternal unprompted love prompted your salvation and not anything in you that should be settled in your mind and in my mind this was an act of love this was a sacrificial gift at a great cost to christ that was given to you it came from god's love not from your merit not from your deserving and that is what the first point we would like to learn about the character of god the attribute of god displayed in gospel now come to the next thing the second word of hope a second attribute of god a second word of go- hope in the gospel a second attribute of god god is a god of kindness god is a god of kindness scripture uses different words to describe the character of god who provided such a great salvation to such unworthy sinners as you and me and i want you to see these things because these are essential these are foundational and these are fundamental in our understanding about how we need to be living out of legalistic mindset that sense of entitlement certain things what i do will prompt god to do these things or because i am doing certain things this way uh, god is in debt to me that he need to do certain things for me that mindset should not be there uh, for a person who knows the scripture god is a god of love that is demonstrated in the gospel god is a god of kindness there is a gracious goodness to god and we read about that in romans chapter 2 verse 4 romans chapter 2 verse 4 apostle paul says in verse 4 do you think lightly of the riches of his kindness and tolerance and patience not knowing that the kindness of god leads you to repentance have you repented in your life the deep biblical repentance is something which we need to study which we have studied many many times there is some sort of remorse towards sin there is some sort of uh, uh, oh i shouldn't have done that that uh, sorry type of feeling but biblical repentance is something more than that biblical repentance understand that i am a sinner i it's a mental comprehension My biblical repentance uh, will bring some emotional uh, 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 emotional feeling in your heart that you feel grieved that you grieved god you are living a sinful self centered life that grieves you some emotional aspect of it then there is an volitional aspect i need to turn from sin to a savior from sin to a savior why because you cannot save yourself your good works cannot save yourself because if uh, if you do everything right and if you fail in one area of the law of god you have failed in all you have broken all i always use this illustration to ha- use look at a window a like glass do window and you can throw 10 stones at one shot and break the window you can throw five stones and throw and uh, it'll break the window you throw one stone and that also can break the window the same way the law of god can be broken by one sin 
it took only one sin for Adam and Eve to lose the paradise. It took only one sin for Achan and his family to be uh, stoned to death. It took only one sin for Ananias and Sapphira to lose their life uh, uh, at the feet of uh, Peter the Apostle. Uh, there are many, many examples in the Bible. One sin is very costly. And you cannot do certain things and cover up for your sin. You need the blood of Christ to cover your sin. You need the sacrificial death of Christ on behalf of you to be applied into your life that you can be covered. Uh, how blessed it is uh, to, to be covered from your sin, forgiven of your sins. And David explained about the, the blessedness of forgiveness of sin. The, the liberty which he enjoyed uh, in Psalm 32. If you have the Bible, read Psalm 32 to find out the liberty which you can experience. The joy which bubble out of your heart if you have the assurance that your sins are forgiven. The assurance that you have eternal life. The assurance that you belong to Christ. The assurance that death is not the end of the story. The assurance that your eternity is secure if you trust in Christ. Because not on your merit but on his mercy that you trust and lean. And he will carry you all the way through eternity. So we learn about the kindness of God displayed in God leading you to repentance. God leading you away from sin. God leading you towards Christ the Savior. Even this morning as you listen to the word of God, it is God's kindness which is calling you to himself. Do you, do you think about this call, this urge, this command to repent from the Bible and through from Christ? Uh, you take it lightly. You are taking something which is uh, very dangerous. You are thinking of something very lightly which is the riches of his kindness. Riches of his tolerance. Riches of his patience. And one day it is going to come to an end. And there will not be a chance to repent. There will not be a chance to rewrite your life. But when you have the offer of salvation from the God of the universe. You better grab hold of it. If things what I am trying to explain is, is not clear in your mind. If you are not convicted or convinced. I urge you to read the Bible. And you will be able to understand who you are in the light of the scripture. And who God is in the light of the scripture. And that will prompt you to come to him. Because he is a God of kindness. He is a God of kindness. And his kindness lead us to repentance. The kindness of God lead you to repentance. Kindness means that God has shown generous favor. Generous favor to us. Here you were a guilty sinner in hostility towards God deserving eternal death and eternal judgment and he graciously and in kindness rescued you from all of that. He graciously, kindly, abundantly pardoned you in Christ. And not only pardoned you, he imputed to you the very righteousness of Christ and give you a perfect legal standing forever and ever in his presence. This is nothing but kindness. God has shown generous favor to us. He has given us kindness that is useful for us, beneficial for us, helpful for us. What we can say about the nature of God is that in salvation, in gospel, in the gospel of Christ, he shows great kindness that helps them, helps us by delivering us from eternal damnation. Helps them by bringing them into a pathway that leads them securely and safely into the eternal bliss of heaven where we will one day ultimately experience the great beauty and great splendor and great majesty of God and his perfect new heaven and earth. This call is a call with kindness. It is not to trap you. It is not to entrap you. It is not to enslave you. But it is to give you freedom. And it is to give you the righteousness of Christ imputed in your life. Your life of sin and your self-centered and sin-centered life has not uh, uh, gotten you anywhere. 
with all the things what you have procured, the money, the prestige, the power, the influence, everything is going to fade away one day. And one day we are going to die. And then we are going to face judgment. And if that day has to go well with you and me, we need to trust Christ who has taken upon himself the judgment of your sin and my sin. And I will tell you, it is a kindness of God which offers such a free salvation. Remember what Jesus said in Matthew 5. God is so kind, he is so good and he is so helpful and he is so favorable that causes every day his sun to shine on even wicked people. Matthew 5 says that God is kind and he's good and he's helpful, he's favorable and he causes his sun to shine on even the wicked people. He's so kind that he allows his rain to fall on lands that despi uh, despise his name. Let me tell you, have you ever thought about rain and water and food as something which has been offered by God. Bible is a wonderful book where God claims that sun is his sun, moon is his moon, his waves, his clouds, his rain. He owns everything. He owns a thousand cattle on the mountain. He owns you and me by way of creation. He is the one who knit us together in our mother's womb. So this God is a kind God. There is no doubt about that for a person who come to the pages of the scripture. Just in an earthly sense, he is good to people who will never bow to him in gratefulness. Still he is giving them water. Still he is giving them rain. Still he is giving them oxygen. That shows the kindness of God. Okay? The temporal mercy and Temporal kindness of God is so abundant when you look around you. And then scripture says it all comes from his hand. And he generously and kindly bestows it upon them who will never ever come to uh, submission to him. Who is in rebellion to him and who reject the truth. He does that. That's what he does with sinners. He is kind to them. And look at what he has done to us in Christ. Look at all the kindness he has shown to us. Bringing us into this lovely, magnificent, wonderful relationship with a savior. And he is by your side. And he is carrying you through. He, uh, we can cast all our cares upon him. We, we can talk to him. We, we can see the hand of God, the hand of Christ uh, 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 making uh, uh, ways open for you. And what a blessed life it is. And I will tell you, there is no kindness on earth that can begin to be compared to the gracious goodness that God showed to you and me in Christ. The best of spouse are nothing like Christ. The best of children and grandchildren are nothing like Christ. All our earthly relationship, all our earthly friendship is not anything which can be compared with a relationship with Christ. Because that is the perfect relationship. And you are having a relationship with a person who is so loving and so kind. And he will impart that love and that kindness into your life. And your hateful, vengeful attitude goes. And you become a loving person because of your uh, loving relationship with Christ and the God of the universe. And you see the, the, the manifestation and display of kindness of God. And uh, uh, as you get acquainted with this kind disposition of God towards you, slowly by slowly he will make you a kind person. And this, this gospel of Christ, it will transform you. It will change you. It will conform you into the likeness of Christ who is the perfect standard for love and kindness. He did it in kindness to show a favor to us. And we need to be grateful to this God. We need to be grateful to this God. And one more thing I'll tell you. He showed our his kindness to us when we were living away from him. When we were not acknowledging him. In the light of that it should humble us. It should uh, uh, allow us to repent. It should make us more grateful to God. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. 
loving heavenly father we thank you and praise you as we come to the close of this day study we learned that you are a god of kindness your kindness lead us into repentance your kindness and your patience lead us to that position where we can receive the forgiveness of our sin and a relationship with god god is drawing us near to himself calling us to have a dear close intimate uh, relationship with him what a great kindness and lord we thank you and praise you for that kindness displayed on the cross of calvary that uh, to purchase us he had to suffer much and we thank you for that favor and enable us to live on a day to day basis remembering the love of god remembering the kindness of god and acknowledging that it is not what uh, 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 what goodness in us that prompted you to do that it is your character and your nature you are kind you are loving so you demonstrated and manifested it into the lives of unworthy sinners like uh, uh, all of us to that and we commit ourselves and we humble ourselves and we commit all these dear ones that they will take the bible seriously and read for themselves to find the eternal joyous hidden truths which will set them free and which will prepare them for eternity in jesus christ most precious name we pray amen